Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 735 um, in Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, second edition. As we covered um, electrostatics in the beginning, we talked about how, um, you know, the basic equations, and then we said what happens when you cross a surface charge. And for here, in the magnetic fields, when we covered that, we discussed the equations, and then we said what happens when you cross a surface current. And now we're going to talk about what happens when you cross a surface charge or surface current to the um, various, the four different fields that we've calculated um, for um, uh, Maxwell's equations and matter. So starting with number one, uh, the interesting case is when you have a surface charge, um, density sigma f. Let me draw a box. So, so we have a surface, and then we have a Gaussian box. And it goes down and it penetrates that surface. Okay? And we're going to take the limit as the height of that box approaches zero. So as we get just very close to the surface there. So um, the sides can't contribute because the sides have no area. So we're going to get um, d vector dot a vector plus d or minus d2 dot a vector, where d1 is on the, the d field on the top and d2 is d field on the bottom. That has to equal to the free charge times a. And since the area vector is pointing perfectly per perpendicular, then we the d vector of 1 in the perpendicular direction minus the d vector of 2 in the perpendicular direction actually has to equal the surface charge, the free surface charge. So that is an interesting relationship from number 1. From number 2, um, since there is no magnetic um, we can use similar reasoning since there is no magnetic charge. Um, so basically V vector on top perpendicular minus the V vector on bottom perpendicular is equal to zero. That means there's no change in the V vector as you cross a surface charge. Okay? For um, thin Amperian loops now. So now we have a surface where we have some kind of a free charge, a free current free surface current that's passing across the surface. And then we're going to take an Amperian loop that uh, we're going to increase closer and closer until the loop is of no height, zero height. Uh, so the limit is that goes there. And so the electric field is going to curl around based on how the magnetic field is going to change. Okay, um, So we get this guy, so the E on top, so we get E vector on top dot the L vector minus the E vector on bottom dot the L vector. The L vector is the top part there. Has to equal to the change in the magnetic flux. Well, what's the area? The area is increasing to zero because that height's increasing to zero. So this has to be equal to zero. So we have the parallel component of the top electric field. Um, minus the parallel component of the bottom electric field have to be equal to zero. So the electric field, the, the electric field passing parallel to a surface um, doesn't change as you cross a surface current. For the H vector, using the same line of reasoning, except for this case we're going to have the current enclosed plus the, the change in the deflux. Okay, so we're going to get H. Similar reasoning, except for this one turns to zero, this one stays, you know, it's the length times the surface charge there, so we're going to get um, H1 in parallel minus H2 parallel is going to be equal to the free surface current dotted with the normal hat across the, the length vector that we're using, um, length hat and the length L, okay? And we're going to use, um, um, what's that rule where you can, if you have a dot of a cross, a triple product. So we can rearrange everything. If we change the order, then we have to change the sign. So we're going to rearrange it so we have the L vector on the outside, and then that means it has to be K cross cross the N hat. Okay, that at the L. Okay. So um, if you have a uh, surface current passing this way, and the h vector is going to be perpendicular to that and it's going to jump um, 
it's going to jump based on how strong that current is. It's, it's pointing this way, and then you jump down, now it's pointing that way. Okay, that, there's a discontinuity there. So let's put boxes around these two guys. This guy doesn't jump. This guy does jump. Okay. Do, 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 do. Actually, we get rid of the L there. That was the common thing that we can pull out, so this guy goes away. Okay. Okay. Um, in linear media, we have the D is equal to epsilon E, so we have epsilon E vector um, above in the perpendicular component um, of the material above minus the epsilon of the material below. Ah, uh, this is not a vector. Not a vector. That has to be equal to the free um, surface charge we jump down. B vectors, we don't have that problem. H vectors, we do. So this is 1 over mu naught B. So the permeability of the top material times the magnetic field above in the parallel direction minus the permeability of the material below times the magnetic field that's parallel has to jump by the normal hat across the KF vector. Okay, and so that's how it works with uh, linear media. So when you're going between different kinds of um, materials, you can use these equations to see how the E vector and the B vector have to change. If you're not dealing with linear media, then you know the D vector and the H vector change, which you are not going to know by how much. Um, uh, if we don't have any free charge, then the electric fields don't change as you cross the material. Okay, the D vectors don't change, and if it's linear media, the electric fields aren't going to change. If you don't have any surface current, then the H vectors won't change as you cross the material, and in linear medium, the B vector won't change. So that's a nice um, thing for continuity there. These, these equations, um, these coefficients and everything, will arise and give us, as we study how electromagnetic waves behave in the next chapter, this will give us how reflection and refraction actually behave. So it's really beautiful when you think about it, starting with Coulomb's equation, uh, Biot-Savar law, Ampere's law, Faraday's law, we can derive how all of optics works. So it's really beautiful. Thanks for your time and patience. Um, be sure to share this with your friends and, and let them know that you appreciate what I'm doing by liking the video. Thanks for your time. Take care and bye.